probably have some more money from the county to the government grants and money. Thank you, volunteer. Sorry, Beach Nuts here with David Wolf live. We are here at the Florida Oceanographic Society in Stewart, Florida. We are here with uh, Zach Judd. He is the education director here. And he's gonna tell us a little bit about the good work they do here at the Florida Oceanographic Society. And then he's going to introduce us uh, to some of the uh, local residents here. Hey guys, welcome to the Florida Oceanographic Society Coastal Center here in Stewart, Florida. We are a 57 acre nature center open to the public. We've got all kind of great aquarium exhibits to represent local ecosystems. And then behind the scenes, we have a full research and restoration division working hard to fix some of the environmental problems our area is dealing with. I'd love to introduce you guys to our Stingray Touch Tank. You know, our mission here is to inspire conservation of Florida's coastal ecosystems through education, research, and advocacy. And all of our animals here at the Coastal Center are here as conservation ambassadors. All of our animals are here to help you learn. So we really put them to work. Every single day, we run educational programs for our guests and visitors, teaching them about the animals, but also teaching them about the environment and what's happening to our local waterways, estuaries, and beaches. In this tank, we find it's an incredible place for guests to interface with nature and have a chance to touch and maybe appreciate something they wouldn't normally get to see this close. You know, nature learning and places like zoos and aquariums really serve to get people impassioned and empowered about the environment. And we find that people leave here with a better sense of what they need to do to fix area waterways and our, our water problems that Florida's dealing with. In the aquarium in front of you right now, we have three different species of stingrays. We have Cowno stingrays that you're looking at right this second. They are a social, highly active species of ray, and they can actually max out at nearly seven feet from wingtip to wingtip. They, uh, they tend to like contact, so they tend to come up to us and say hi to us pretty regularly. We offer uh, a chance for our guests to actually feed the rays twice a day, and that's always one of our, uh, our guests' favorites when they come to visit us. Now down here on the bottom, we've got three Atlantic stingrays. They're just kind of hanging out there in the sand. They're a little bit more of a sedentary, solitary species. This is the most common species of stingray you would see in our local waters, and those are actually about full grown, maybe 18 inches across. One of the real beauties of having these rays here is it gives people to understand the importance of all the different components of our ecosystems, not just the charismatic animals, the dolphins, the sharks, the manatees. We have, uh, in addition to the ray tank, we've got a 750,000 gallon game fish lagoon aquarium that's loaded with local species of, of game fish. We have four permanently disabled sea turtles that we take care of, and it gives us a chance to, to teach people about some of the threats that our turtles are facing. We've got an incredible invertebrate touch tank where you can come and touch things like horseshoe crabs and sea cucumbers. Again, we're trying to get people to appreciate the whole story of nature, not just the charismatic animals that we're already familiar with. We, uh, we've got a beautiful facility here. We'd love to have you come out and check us out sometime. Really, again, our mission is built around learning. We want you to go home with at least a little bit more knowledge than you had when you came here. We're a, we're a voice in the community, and we, we, really, we really appreciate everything that everybody's done to help us, our volunteers, our, our members. We couldn't do it without, without their support, and we'd love to have you guys come and check us out and visit us. And, and for the time being, you get a great virtual visit with us. I mentioned that we have three species of ray here, but I've only talked about two of the three. Out in front of you on the sand is our, is our southern stingray over here, to the right a little bit. There we go, hanging out down there on the bottom. Now this is the ray, if you've ever been to the Cayman Islands or um, to the Bahamas and fed a stingray on a cruise, you're hanging out with one of these guys. They'll get to be five or six feet across when they're full grown. And again, these are, these are native to our local waters. We work really hard to encourage very, very gentle contact with all of our rays. You know, we find that the very lightest touch is enjoyed by the rays more than anything else. So we, with our staff and volunteers, work to make sure that as guests hang out with the rays, they're having an enjoyable time, but it's also in the interest of the animals to make sure the animals are comfortable. Can you tell us about some of the other activities? I know you do uh, oyster reef deployment and some of the other 
uh, activities to promote environmental consciousness and uh, to help us uh, help our local uh, environment uh, recover here from some of the bad uh, bad water situations that we've been facing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in front of the public eye, we're we're a nature center, so we do. We do our daily educational programming here at the Coastal Center. We offer nature walks, we have summer camp programs, we run a, a nighttime lecture series. We even have a, a permit from the state of Florida to lead sea turtle nesting walks. But behind the scenes is, is really where we shine. You know, we've got a, an extremely active restoration program where we, where we replant mangroves where they've been cut down and we replant seagrass and marsh grasses where they died off and we regrow oyster reefs. You know, that oyster reef restoration program is our largest and most successful habitat restoration program. Every week, we go out to local restaurants and pick up thousands of pounds of empty oyster shells. Shells that would normally end up heading into the trash can and straight to the landfill. Instead, we bring them back here to the Coastal Center, where our amazing group of volunteers help us bag them up into big mesh bags. And we put those bags out in the estuary where the magic happens. Little baby oysters, no bigger than grains of sand, are always looking for something to stick to. Their favorite thing to stick to is other oyster shells. So by putting bags of oyster shell out in the estuary, we're able to give those tiny oysters a place to stick to and a place to grow. Within a year, our bags filled with dead oyster shell are now covered with living oysters. Those oysters provide important nursery habitat for many young animals. Great example is stone crabs. If you like to eat stone crab claws when they're in season, little tiny stone crabs love to use oyster reefs as a nursery. Less oyster reefs means less stone crabs. But more importantly, our oyster reefs are filtering our water. Oyster reefs are incredibly important as a filtration source for our environment. One adult oyster can filter as much as 50 gallons of water every single day. So when you think about the possibility of adding millions of oysters back into the ecosystem, we are actively cleaning up our waters just through some volunteer-based efforts. You know, our area has really suffered some pretty major environmental uh, disturbances over the last few decades, and last year was one of our worst years on record. We've lost a tremendous amount of seagrass in our area estuaries. In the last six years or so, we've lost roughly 47,000 acres of seagrass. Places that used to be completely carpeted in underwater grass are now just sandy bottom. So as an organization, we are learning how to cultivate seagrass in captivity, and we're slowly planting it back in the environment where it belongs. That is awesome stuff, Zach. Thank you so much for sharing this uh, amazing facility with us. Awesome. And all the good work that you guys are doing. And with your permission, we're going to just camp out and hang with the Stingrays for a while. Hang out with the Stingrays. And, uh, you let know? you get back to work. And uh, thank you so much. And we will be back to visit you again soon. All right. Thanks again, guys. See thanks, you, everybody. Zach. Take care.
Two and six.
the window over here and see if we can see our boy. Come on back here, buddy. So look at his fins. You see how his fins next to his tail are a little bit longer and rounder with little pencils. That's how we tell a boy stinger. Come on over here. Sit over here. Sit over here. So wait till he's getting closer. You see, not his big fins, but the second little set of fins on his tail. They have two little projections on them called classicals and all the boy stingers have. You know who else has those? Boy sharks. So you tell the boy shark from the girl shark. So if you went back and looked at our nurse sharks out in the big game fish in the aquarium, you'd be able to tell the boys from the girls. Here he comes. Don't touch. So let's look. See, he's got the things oh. sticking on the back of his fins that look like almost like two fingers. Those are what make him a boy. Stick. What's your uh, What's your doctor in uh, marine biology? Fish biology. So I study the fish in their local waterways.
We sure hope you had a good time. Well, we have to let you know that the center does close at 4 o'clock. It is now 3.45 at this time. If you'd like to make a visit to the gift shop, this would be the perfect time to do it. And we hope to come...